In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks, up and running. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech and today we're going to be looking at hacks. What it is, how to install it, and then how to use it. This video is part of my Home Assistant Back to Basics series, so make sure you check out the other videos in that series. So let's get going. Hacks, or the Home Assistant Community Store, is basically a place where you can download additional integrations or themes or Lovelace cards. These are things that haven't been included in the real Home Assistant integrations, possibly because they don't quite meet all the cr criteria or they haven't had enough work on them yet, so they're still in development. So there may be some issues with them, but generally speaking, if you have a device and you can't integrate it using a real Home Assistant integration, or an official one at least, then you're probably going to be able to find a solution in the hack store that lets you integrate it through there. Now the installation process of hacks is pretty well documented on the Hacks website. But what we're going to need to do is head over there and download the latest version of Hacks. We're then going to need to go to our file editor and create a new folder called Custom Components. This may already exist for you if you've downloaded some custom components already, but if not, create it here. We're then going to need to upload the folder from the Hacks download and put it into this Custom Components folder. The easiest way to do this is through SambaShare and doing it through your file browser on your computer. But you can do it you know, however you would like really if you've got an alternative that works as well. Once you've done that, you're going to need to restart Home Assistant. While it's restarting, we're going to need to create a hack access token. So we need to head over to GitHub and if you don't already, create yourself an account. We're then going to need to go into your developer settings and click on personal access tokens. In here, we create a new token. We can call it hacks and we don't need to tick any of the boxes. We then click OK and we need to copy the personal access token. Once Home Assistant has restarted, we can head over to the configuration and the integration section. We click on the plus and add a new integration, searching for hacks. If we click on hacks, it may take a little while for it to load the first time and then you want to paste in your personal access token. Hit submit and hacks should appear as a new integration. It will also appear as an item in your sidebar. Fantastic, we've got hacks integrated. We can now click on hacks in our sidebar and it should open up. It may take a little while the first time because it's got to load everything and install everything, but after that it'll be much quicker. In hacks, we have integrations and front end. In integrations, or custom components, you can find integrations for your smart devices, the ones that don't exist as official integrations, but do exist in the hack store. If you find search for one, you can click on it and it will tell you how to install it. Generally speaking, you have to press install. That will install the custom component. All integrations require you to restart Home Assistant before you can actually integrate it, once you've downloaded the integration that is or install the integration that is. So once we've clicked install and it's installed, we need to restart Home Assistant and then we need to actually integrate our devices. Now this will vary depending on what the integration is. A lot of them you can do through the front end now, but some of them still require you to edit the YAML. Again, read the information in your integration in the custom component in the hack store to tell you how to do it. If it's in the front end, then you just need to go to your integration section, click on the plus and search for that integration and it will now appear, even though it didn't before. We can now have a look at the front end. In here, you're going to find Lovelace cards and themes. Lovelace cards are basically cards that you can use to add additional functionality or views to your Lovelace dashboard. Because the basic ones that come with Home Assistant are a little basic. I'm going to install a few that I like to use now, including the mini media player and the mini graph card. To use custom cards, you need to go to your Lovelace editor and add a new card, and you're going to use the YAML to edit it. In here, you type the type 
as custom colon whatever the custom card is. So for this example, custom colon mini media player. And then you can use the other tags provided in the mini media player repository to set up this card. So I'm going to add a, an entity and various other things so I can control my Sonos with, with this card. It will say at the bottom that these entities aren't supported. That's just because they're not supported with normal cards, but they will be supported with this. So you just need to click done and it will all work. There are also loads of themes you can find in the hack store that will make your Lovelace look a whole lot better with very little effort. They work in the same way. You search for your theme, you find your theme, you click install on your theme, and then depending on whether you've done this before, they will automatically pop up. If you haven't used themes before, then you need to go to your configuration settings and write this. This means that your configuration or your front end will look in the themes folder for your themes. Otherwise it won't know where to look and no themes will appear. If this is the first time you've written this into your configuration, then you're going to need to restart Home Assistant for this change to take effect. Once restarted, we can go to our Lovelace editor and change the theme for our dashboard. And you can see instant improvements. Now one thing to note with hacks is you need to update it before you do any other updates. You'll often see in the front page of the hack store lots of cards that might need updating. So keep on top of them and obviously keep an eye out for any breaking changes. But the important one is if the hack store itself needs updating. If the hack store needs an update and you update Home Assistant before you update the hack store, you could end up breaking everything. So before you do anything with Home Assistant updates, whether that's OS or core, double check the hack store is fully up to date. Otherwise, you're going to get some problems. So there we have it. Hacks fully installed and up and running. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.